some farm fans. This is the start of the grain bin remodel project. I guess we'll call this the $2,000 bin site. I know I have more than $1,000 in parts bought, plus whatever, you know, I bought in flooring in years past, you know, back in 2018, I started dragging flooring home. And well, you know, it's four years later. And uh, well, we've got jacks now. So we're ready to lift up. So we can cut the bottom off and put more anchors on. It was very loud. Well, when the cold battery ever so rudely cut me off. I was showing you fine folks that the jacks are mounted to the bin. We have tension on them and so far they're not sinking in the mud too bad. Maybe there's some gravel around the foundation, if only a few pebbles. It's loud in the bin. Um, you can see our cut seam right there. Brennan is hiding around the bin. Um, and I'm working on cutting off the old anchors. I said, you're hiding around the bin. I'm not hiding. I know, well, I was on the other side. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, apparently we just destroyed one carbide bit metal blade. And now we're trying out a more standard a sheet metal blade for the circular so, saw. Oh yeah, those are... Birched. Yes, yes. We could just go buy a new one. Or are those hard to find? Harbor Freights. So it's not hard to find oh. unless you got one around here. Hillsborough is the closest Harbor Freight. I didn't know if it was like more of a yeah. standard hardware find we could run uptown. Um, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. One point of nuisance, it's really irks my OCD is that you're supposed to use five jacks for 27 foot bins of however tall this is uh, and it doesn't work out these are nine rings and we can't go every other seam because well we end up with two together um, it'll lift it'll work and I'll show you guys uh, how it's going with getting these uh, old anchors off and then we'll catch Brennan with the cutting It'll be loud, very loud. This isn't very quiet either. I got the hammer and the grinder. And I've been collecting my rusty old bits. The old tar is fairly brittle. And it chips away. I mean, it doesn't just flake off, uh, but it's not malleable like it was fresh. got all new anchor materials and we will see that later when we get to using them. Now we get to the portion of the bin where it wasn't very well attached uh, from the get-go of this project where it had rusted out. What a joy. That's why we're doing this. This bin had no floor so the grain here on the concrete would obviously gain some moisture, rot, and rust the metal. So in the pure wild ruckus I've got a cordless grinder and a diamond blade and I'm working on cutting off pieces uh, of the lower little bit that we are removing from the bin just so it's manageable to you know, scrap them. And Brennan's on the other side, he's got a carbide bit and a or carbide blade and a circular saw uh, cutting his way around at this little section here for which he cannot uh, cut because the jacks in the way, but I can reach in with the grinder okay uh, and cut it. It's loud. It's all very loud. We are back for day two. Uh, yesterday we got the bottom cut off all the way around, so we have this nice gap here. And we're working on shipping away the remnants of the tar. And I'm gonna work on cleaning that up some. 
uh, sweeping the bin as best as I can, I guess from the inside. Uh, once we get this cleaned off, then we'll be ready to do the angle iron and set it down. But yeah, we burnt through one carbide bit, or one carbide uh, circular saw blade. Had to finish with diamond wheels on the grinder. This is one good and cleaned up section. Uh, it's not bad. Now, I, I realize this pad is old. You know, probably close to at least 60, maybe 70 years old. So I shouldn't critique their concrete skills and it hasn't cracked all to pieces. I mean, there's a few cracks, but it's not uh, coming out of surface or level or whatever you want to call it. So that's good. Now back to the work. We can already hear some going on. I can't sit here and shoot video forever. Now I can't smell the paint fumes. You might be able to see the dust and the rays of sun coming in the door. Um, there's not a whole lot of before. But every place that's shiny down low here, where we have aluminum paint, was a little bit rusty, say sort of like that. And uh, I mean, we didn't cut all the rust off, it'd be impossible. And someone's gonna say, why didn't you put a new bottom ring on? Well, uh, I think one new ring was gonna cost close to $3,000. And this is uh, all about saving pennies. So the metal's good enough, it's a little brown, and it won't matter so much because there won't be grain against it down low because we'll have a floor, say, halfway up that sheet. So most of the rusty stuff will just have air against it. Uh, well, and then there's those higher spots. Um, not quite sure the culprit. We'll figure those out after we get something in here and see, see what happens. That could just be pure age because this has been sitting closed up without much airflow. That just might be a pure humidity problem versus rotting grain. Yes, this side wasn't so bad. There's just a small strip. Oh, hello, everybody. Meet the new dog. That's Eva. Haven't thrown that in the video yet, but there she is. She showed up on a neighboring farm and they didn't need a dog. So uh, we acquired Eva. So we've developed a system. Since we have holes already ready to go, we're using those to line up a piece of the new base angle. And then filling in the gaps. Um, around it, mostly. Uh, yeah, we need some cutting action. This one's too low. I can't get up to it. I can't get up to the bolt. This is the first time I've had that issue. We went, well, you got almost the... halfway around before we Where's issues the... Is there wheel on something? Or... No, we don't have anything ready to cut. Um, so this was supposed to go better than it is. Okay. Well, we have the angle on all the way around, and we're trying to figure out how we're going to drop this thing down nicely, uh, having three people and five jacks. Um, so it'll be a bit of a circus. I'm sure professional builders may have enough people to have one per jack. Luckily, these two are close, because five jacks doesn't fit it well around nine panels. Well, we're back the next weekend, working on the bins. Yeah, we finished up on the dark drilling these holes. We went ahead and drilled them first before actually putting the, the tar strip underneath here. 
because we knew, at least the way it was sitting before, looked like there would, could be a lot of movement needed. Like we have to push the wall in or something to get it lined up. So we went ahead and sat it down, drilled the holes that got dark on us, and we threw some bolts down in the holes to keep it from sliding sideways. And in you know that week, we had a small bit of wind that wasn't too wild, um, but it would take your kite flying pretty good. And the grain bin didn't go anywhere. And to keep it lined up while we lifted, we threw these rebar rods in. We just cleaned this bottom piece for our tar strip. And we dust off the concrete. Yeah, blow it off, dust it off. Try to get the water right for all. Oh yeah, it was a little sprinkly yesterday. We found out just how well the pad was poured or not by where the water was puddling up inside. Now, I wouldn't say this is so super important to have the concrete as clean. It's just, this needs to be cleaned because the tar is gonna, that strip will be stuck there. Now, when this bin was built, it looks like they just slopped loose tar down, but, you know, modern manufacturing, they now have a nice, like, almost, let's say, glue-type strip. Get our dust out of the way from drilling the holes. Yeah. That's when we really find out. When we put this down and tighten it, we'll find out how good we cut our bin. See, hopefully there's not too much fluctuation uh, between the concrete and the bin bottom. Or if we cut straight, which I mean, we didn't necessarily chalk line it, we eyeballed it. Um, but our eyeballing was backed up by based on how well these angle pieces fit. Because if they didn't fit with uh, any of the bolt holes, then obviously we didn't do a good job lining it up. Now, there's a lot of holes still to drill, but like we had holes to go by based on what was there at the seams. And if I couldn't get that to line up, then we probably didn't cut enough material off. See, look in there, we got a little room. So we cut it, looks like high enough. Can we see that? Yeah. I didn't want to have to come back and cut off little slices, so I uh, tried to make sure that we were cutting high a little bit. I didn't think we'd ever cut too much off. Didn't think that would be a problem. Now I come around on this side, this took the brunt of the wind yesterday, and this is where the water kind of got in. If you look underneath, you can see where it had been getting in and with the grain, eating away the concrete so it's not smooth, eating it down like the rock that was mixed in. Brennan's doing one more dust off. This is what we're putting down. This is what the grain bin place sent me with for sealant to go underneath the bottom of the bin. Three 10 foot rolls in a box. It's an inch wide and 3 eighths thick. 30 foot in a box. And then let's see pi diameter for the circumference. 13 and a half feet times pi. Or no, it's 27 feet times pi is our diameter to find out if they gave us enough of this stuff. Uh, 27 times 3 is. Uh, about 90 feet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, th we're, we're rounding a lot. There, we should have extra. Yeah. 30 foot in a box. That makes 90. And then pi times 27, because this is one of them oddball bins. Grain bins were designed in three foot diameter increments. It's typical to have like 18. I don't really see many 15s. 15 would be smaller than the silo, but I guess you'd say 15, 18, 21. 24. 24 is incredibly common. There's tons of 24s out there. 24s and 18s. 27 and then 30 is another very common one. And I don't know if that somehow correlates to, you know, different length panels around the outside. Um, I haven't done the math there, never asked anybody, so you guys can try to figure that one out for me. We have done our first piece. I wonder if I should like massage it out some. That might work. 
That wouldn't bother. As soon as you push it down, it's going to press it out. Yeah. So as long as we got good enough overlap. Yeah. And maybe go two inches. That's a solid inch and some. Okay. I think. That should be good. So this inch wide tar fits nicely in what I'm guessing is about an inch and a half wide uh, you know, piece of angle iron. I don't know if there's much adhesive sprayed on it. It's just the fact that this tar substance is sticky. Trust me, this is not as bad as roofing tar. I've messed Well, I'm sure they've done something to thicken it up a little bit. That's what I need to find is some sort of tar to seal the bottom once we're all done. bit of sideways motion when we lift it over here. Uh, see, it's amazing the difference having a false floor in these bins make. Because the first bin, hopefully I remember to put a link here of that project. Now the, the bottom was fine. Now the outside, the tar is getting old and breaking away just because it's getting brittle and aged, drying out. But the bottom, this bottom angle piece seems to be in pretty decent shape. And it's not all rusty on the inside because there's no grain right against the base and the concrete. Even, so even if moisture does get in, there's no organic substances for it to react with and rot to start any sort of decaying process that would severely adversely affect metal. Okay, Brennan, what are we doing? What do you think we're doing? Well, this was supposed to go as a better interview than that, but I guess oh, I'll... Okay. Uh... <laughs> I thought we were doing a cooking show here. Ah, uh, what are we, baking a cake? Yeah, yeah we're baking a concrete we cake. So, while well, in the cleaning the garage out, I found this lovely stuff called Rock Tight. Um, it's it's a anchoring and patching concoction of cement um, that sets incredibly fast. Uh, it sets in like 10 to 15 minutes, and in 30 minutes, uh, it's pretty well cured. So, oh yeah, we gotta work quick. We have a pound and a half of dust is not the proper term, but it's it's pretty much a powder. Fine powder. Yes, very fine powder. And it's three and a half ounces of water per pound for patching. And we're patching a couple uh, problem spots in the foundation. That's pretty thick. Yeah, that's almost like a putty. Originally, not that I knew I had this at the time, thought about we'd maybe use it for the anchor bolts. However, uh, once we decided that this would be better for the cracks, we're not gonna have enough for the anchor bolt holes. And we'll get to that when we get there uh, about how we're gonna kind of seal those up so they don't get watered in them and cause problems. You want me to stir any? Or am I just doing a fantastic job filming? Uh, you're gonna be, I'm gonna be pouring in, you're gonna be putting real quick here. Yeah, and I got the spatula. I was feeling like some of them uh, bigger channels where we're watching Daddy do all the work. I got to just be cameraman. See, this is where I was glad we had this up higher, so I hope we get underneath it. This one we got a crack. This is definitely bad. This is when there was an anchor bolt here. We can see the crack going all the way down the foundation. Well, that's flowing in fantastically well. It's almost like that, uh, um, a non-Newtonian fluid. Um, yeah, oh, the goo. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever they call that. That's, it's, that's yeah. how it's behaving, because you try to move it fast and it doesn't, but then it just sits there and flows in nicely. Yeah. So I'm unsure how much I'll be able to do here. Because it'll just, it looks like it's liquidy enough, it'll flow out pretty good. 
I just gotta try to get it cleaned up around the edge. This is using quite a bit to fill that gap in there. How much is left? Just some amount. Eh, okay. I mean, I'll try my best to uh, spatula this out. Try moving it, acts hard. This is what's weird. Well. Then it pushes back up. Uh, a little bit more? I don't know. My problem is, is I don't know what I'm doing. And at the center, it just, it pushes back out. Like I push it forward to level it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna be doing any better than that. So I do it again, I'm afraid it'll bubble up. Like hopefully gravity's on our side. Yeah, hopefully. It's better than it was. Okay. I have a spatula full. You know, it really does behave like that uh, oobleck. That's what they call it. You watch some of them engineer guys on YouTube. Like, uh, what, uh, was it Dan Rober? He made some... Uh, backyard uh, scientist. Oh, uh, the, the Australian guys. Oh, um, uh, yep. They you throw know, stuff off a tower. And all it is is cornstarch water and a bit of glue. Yeah. Uh, what are they, what's their name again? I don't remember. Uh, name. how ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, they do some fun stuff, but not all with Ublek, they just throw stuff off a tower. This is very hard to trowel out. That one, there's not so much underneath the edge of the bin here. Okay, that's smooth, I guess. I want it to adhere good. Hopefully it just flows in and gravity does the work for us. That's not gonna affect our seal right there. And then back here, there's all sorts of sins. Uh, <laughs> this was just packed full of tar, but you see how uneven it is? right in there. Now we're getting this set up before lunch. Now we're gonna run into some problems because of the metal here. We'd put extra extra tar stripping in there to feel, seal that in. Okay, how hard is it? Oh, wow, that's... Well, you can... Yeah, I, I know what you mean there. It's a little... It'll leave a little residue on your fingers. But it's not soft at all. It's hard. Yeah. Box said in 30 minutes we could just start anchoring stuff. Uh, 10. Start setting up in 10. Yeah. You can kind of wet sand it smooth, it looks like. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, next time it rains, it'll take care of that, right? All our rods in. Nope, we got a few out. So I guess pull tape, right? Anything else we need to do? Uh, pull tape and bring it down. Yeah, check for dust. Is that one clean? It looks dusty from here. One you just put in. Okay, it's clean. Just the color of it. Nope. On the other side. Yep. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? One turn down. Hopefully we do this fairly evenly. We've got our stakes in here to keep it sort of in line. Uh, one thing we gotta watch out for is the safety latch here. <clears throat> Uh, well, the springs have broken on a lot of them. This one didn't have a handle. So it has the handy dandy universal handle. The crescent, or not the crescent, the vice grip. You land it down another. Okay, I'll go back this way. 
That's the problem with having five jacks. Not an even number. Now the most break going up that you know these rods are not smooth sided. This one I really wish <clears throat> there's a little bit of movement there, but we can't move it around much once we get the tar touching the concrete. Yeah, this, by this, how much did we have to push this one in by this jack over here? Uh, that's not too bad, that's loose. Oh, this jack is loose. There's nothing on this one. That's still kind of wedged in there. But typically once we let the weight off, the base will flex in. Um... Eh, that's enough room to work. That one's okay. Yeah. I'm all the way down. When I After I went back to that one, there was no weight on it. There's no weight on that one. I know, well, there wasn't before I cranked this one down, but everybody pretty well loose then. Yep. I guess we're free or down. This better be where we want it, because that's where it's sticking. It's a lot of weight right here. That tar got squished down fantastically well. Looks like this. Yeah, it's touching, but it's not squishing. I'd feel better with more tar squish. We definitely got a lot of good tar squish here. We double layered the tar um, because of some of this stuff. I'll we'll probably need to cut that metal out and just slather that with more tar at the end when we fully seal it up. Well, I'm just hoping that bolt pulls that down because there's still daylight there. We're not building a national monument. Ooh. How are we looking, Brennan? Yeah. Halfway done. Yeah, and a lot of learning in the process about anchor bolts. Cleaning all the dust and schmutz out of the holes. We kind of re-drilled them a little bit uh, because now we had a rain since last week when we worked on this last. So I was, we thought we were doing things right by trying to put some sealant down in the holes. You to keep water from getting in. Like, actually have it sealed down in the hole so water couldn't ever get down in, no matter how much tar was or was not ever applied on top. Well, we only got one to tighten that way, and then the next six or, or so have not tightened. This one I guess we can leave, um, but I guess we're going to go to putting them in dry now because we were putting them in with the sealant. That one right there is in dry and it it tightened. I have ran one of them out of threads and stripped it. That's gonna be real bare. But with the sealant, we were able to take the pry bar and pull it right out. I guess the sealant lubricated the hole. Um, didn't think that was quite a possibility, but it did. Um, so I guess these ones with sealant, we're just going to kind of put them in and come back tomorrow day after when the sealant hardens and then try to tighten them and hopefully that goes better. If not, the bin will at least be slightly better off than it was before and still only be two-thirds anchored. <laughs> but at least now it's sealed and won't blow away so easy, right? Yep. Oops. This one's clean. Now holes are offset in these square pieces. Now oh, that one just pushes right down by a finger. Try to get it as deep as possible. We did have a hammer out here somewhere. Uh, I think it's on the other side. Uh, ring around the grain bin. Need a hammer? Yep. Okay, don't mess it up. Well, nope. ratchet handle makes a good hammer. Now that one we're bottoming out, it feels like. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
There we go. Kind of got enough to get that one started turning. Yeah, I bottomed out. And now these should tighten. Oh, that feels a lot better. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. That's probably got it. That's about all it should take is less than a half inch or so of threads. Um, because we look at the base of these, by the time you're up here to that hole, you've lost. The goal is for it to hit in the first half inch, kind of there in the hash marks. So you pull it up a quarter, probably bring it up another quarter or solidly into that metal before you start getting up here. And at that point, yep, like I said, you've lost. That's tight. Definitely shouldn't be using any uh, impact on these because you probably will pull them right through. Well, we're ending this day. By trying to get a few bolts put in, we're gonna be here a while. Uh, really, it'd be a great three-person process. One person drilling all the holes, and then, you know, obviously somebody on the outside sticking bolts in and the person on the inside tightening them. And hopefully nobody's outside sticking their hand close to where the hole's being drilled, because that could be painful. We got a long way to go. This will really test out the nut and bolt supply I have left over from when we built the Quonset hut. We got all the bolts in earlier. That's a lot of drilling. It's hard being down on the ground. You've got no leverage, like you're trying to sit there. Laying doesn't help. It doesn't give you, a, I don't know, good friction or something. Or it hurts. Plus it feels like it'd be like working over your head, depending upon how you lay down. Uh, but it's done. I would now I kind of know why anybody I uh, asked about doing this just wanted to replace this bottom sheet. But we didn't. We saved a lot of money by just cutting off the bottom. Let's see. So we're gonna wrap up this installment of the two thousand dollar bin site remodel. <laughs> Um, with the tarring here, take a look at what I got. I don't know if it's the right thing, but it's what I got that seemed uh, kind of good. There's lots of somebody advertising on Facebook a hot rubber seal to put on this, and this is some sort of tar. Um, this stuff must not be popular, I figured out, because there's rust in the bucket and this was on clearance. Uh, it's called Dura Flash, all weather flashing cement. And you, you obviously got to trial it on. Water dry application, that's good. Um, it's they call it kind of an asphalt tar. There's little fibers in it. You can see it looks kind of stringy on the trowel here. I'm doing my best to smooth it. I didn't think I was going to take it all the way to the edge, but there's enough places where I'm annoyed and maybe it's just my eyesight that I think this edge is not lower than the material inside. Um, so I'm, not, I'm probably not being as efficient. They claim a five gallon bucket here um, will cover 60 square feet. And that's like at an eighth inch thick, I think that it says. I am not getting it that thin. Luckily, the lip here is usually less than six inches. So that helps me out. But I got two five-gallon buckets. I was thinking I was going to get one bin per bucket, but like I said, I'm not as efficient. I thought about using a foundation sealant that was is usually brushed on, but uh, for some reason I thought that would maybe be too thin and runny, and I wouldn't get a good application to uh, the higher surface of the wall here. Maybe I'm overthinking that. Maybe not. So I went with this instead. Um, hopefully it's the right choice. We're slobbing it on pretty thick. Make sure we have good slope away so any water that drips down obviously runs away. And seal it all good. 
And with this stuff, if it's like the old tar, hopefully we never have to come back and work on this, but it's inevitable. It's man-made. That the old tar substance uh, got good and brittle and was easy to remove because it was so brittle. I don't know if this will do something similar, but it probably won't be in my lifetime that these bins should need work. Hopefully it's a good long time. Kind of working on my technique. It's very sticky, obviously, plus I'm working around the jacks. I could move them. I'm just leaving them here uh, because I'm going to need them on the bin next door. And after that, we'll see what I do with the jacks. If I keep them around to get in my way and clutter the barnyard or, you know, try renting them out. Or if I sell them, I don't know. I got to finish this first. There's a big old glop. It's slow work. I've been at this for probably an hour now, at least, and haven't made it halfway around the bin. I'm getting better, getting faster, working on my technique and how I get it laid out. And I can't explain to you how to do it. Other than, man, it gives you a good right arm workout. Or if you're left-handed, but I'm not that good left-handed. So I'm gonna keep going here try to get this done tonight it's gonna to rain tomorrow my hope was to have this all sealed up before it rains so we don't worry about getting water anywhere I wouldn't have to worry about it drying out I don't want to seal it up with water in it that'd be counterintuitive I mean I don't know if the water would ever work its way out I don't want to find out so we've had a decent dry stretch and I'm trying to at least get this portion done so I'll catch you guys later with more oh fun farming action this is a fun one that the really like right around these anchor plates, I gotta like smash it in, try to get underneath it. I don't wanna cover them over just yet. I don't think I have to, as long as I get a good squish of tar underneath. And you kinda gotta move off of it. You can't lift. If you lift, it'll stick. And uh, not come off nicely. Oh, now this is the end. We'll, we'll catch you guys later.